So COVID-19 has imposed a lot of complications on a lot of different businesses. We're seeing conferences across tech and across gaming industries completely canceling in fear that the, the close proximity would actually cause issues in terms of COVID-19 spread. And so a lot of companies have chosen to cancel their events. And now this has left everybody questioning what was gonna happen with WWDC. I mean, we knew that it was still going to be happening. It's just around the corner and it's happening next week but we didn't know the format that all of this was gonna go in. And all we really knew, all we really had to go on was that we know that Apple plus remote is not typically a good combination, but let's get into it. Apple has released all of their information on WWDC in terms of the timeline and the format that's gonna be happening. So here's everything that you can expect this year. So first off, it's happening next Monday and it's happening on the same timeline as it always is at 10 a.m. Pacific time. So the whole event starts with the keynote, of course, and this is happening in exactly the same format as it has in previous years. Surprisingly, it is still being held at Apple's headquarters and it will be a live streamed event rather than the ridiculous lines, ridiculous crowds that are usually there in terms of media, press, and journalists. You can expect all your same appearances in terms of the staff and people walking you through all the new devices and software. One thing that'll be interesting to see is how Apple's live stream actually holds up with this amount of people watching. Typically they'd have large crowds actually at the event that would be watching live in person due to COVID-19. That's not necessarily possible. So now every single person who wanted to attend and every single person who wants to watch, all media outlets, all journalists, everyone's going to have to watch online. So it'll be interesting to see how Apple handles that demand and in terms of where you can watch this. So Apple's going to be streaming this on a couple of different services, hopefully to spread out that demand. And so number one, it's gonna be on YouTube for everyone to watch. Number two, it'll be streaming on the Apple developer app. And number three, it'll be on the Apple TV app. So all of the standard places that you're used to watching WWDC, if you're used to watching it from home, you'll still be able to do this year and you shouldn't anticipate any changes. So one of the biggest selling points about WWDC and also one of the biggest questions that people are gonna have is that one-on-one -on -one time with developers. And so typically developers would get to sit down with Apple engineers and Apple developers to learn about the new software and get one-on-one -on -one advice. The good news is that Apple has confirmed that they're gonna be continuing with all of these sessions, what they're calling the Apple engineer sessions. There's over a hundred plus of them. And it turns out that this year that they will be by request only. So if that is something you're sitting in on, you'll have to request an appointment and then attend accordingly. Aside from that, everyone should expect a relatively normal experience at WWDC. Apple's confirmed that they're still going to have their standard State of Union address, their 100 plus engineering sessions, one-on-one -on -one labs. It'll be interesting to see how that plays out. And then as well, developer forums, which is going to be new this year. So again, we're just about one week away from WWDC. Let me know in the comments what you're most excited about and what your thoughts are on this new format. As always, remember to hit the subscribe button below, hit the like button if you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one.